Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. So today we're just going to uh, discuss a plan that I have going forward for doing some distro reviews. I wanted to uh, create a rubric and uh, myself and pizza loving nerd put this rubric together and uh, we kind of started with this and we'll probably each um, massage it for our own individual purposes. And so um, if you're uh, following along, it's like, who stole the idea? Well, actually, Pizza said to me, hey, we should work on this. And so he and I got together on my on my cloud last night, and we um, put this together. And I wanted to pass it on to you guys for your thoughts and suggestions here. And so um, first, actually, let me go ahead and change my language on this because, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, Calabora defaults to German. I'm in here in America. So anyway, um, what we have here is we are going to be looking at a rubric and our rubric is going to show us effectively what I want to use to look at distros going forward. So I'm going to use this for the distros that I review on real hardware. And uh, I'm, it's just because I might maybe I'll massage this down the road for uh, for doing the quick reviews and things like that. Uh, but regardless, what we're going to do here is I'm going to walk through the various things and then I would like you to tell me in the comments down below, uh, is this going to be something that, uh, do we want to do something different? Do you think that something here should be added on? If we should take something off, do we add new categories? I would really love your input so that we can basically have a slightly more objective and a less subjective way of testing distros. And so eventually maybe I'll put a site on the website where we can look at this and um, determine what is a site going to look like or not. So to start, uh, we're gonna look at the desktops that are available. So things like uh, what I have in mind here is a, uh, maybe something like um, uh, K, is it chaos? I don't know, I think it's Chaos, or one of them has a couple different desktops you can choose from. How about Nopix? So you use Nopix. You boot up Nopix, and which is a live key, but being a live key, there's still three different desktop environments you can pick from, which means that we have more user options, so we're going to give extra points for every desktop environment that it's possible. Now, whether that is you can download it with your choice of desktop, or like Nopix, you could swap the desktops on the fly. So, and we're not, of course, including the fact that, you know, pretty much any Linux distro, you can put pretty much any desktop on if you work hard enough at it. We're not including that. We're just including what is available for a new user. Next is if there's a great specific modification to the desktop. Um, we would say Ubuntu has greatly modified GNOME for itself. You may like it, you may not like it. That's slightly subjective, but you can at least say that, that Ubuntu did mod GNOME quite heavily and it serves their purpose as well. So I would give three points for that. Whether we like it or not is a different thing, but at least they've done it. If a desktop environment is resource heavy, not recourse heavy, resource heavy. Um, so if it is resource heavy, in other words, greater than 800 megabytes, we're going to dock it some points. And uh, desktop icons. So uh, this is one like Peppermint does not start with desktop icons. It doesn't have a very easy to use tool. So we might dock it at some points. Um, a lot of things based on newer GNOME just don't have desktop icons nor an easy way to add them. Uh, but things like Ubuntu have solved that problem and Solace is going to be solving that problem. And so we're going to be looking at does it have desktop icons or an easy way to add them if somebody likes desktop icons. And then if it doesn't come with a desktop at all, yeah, you're going to lose some points for that. I mean, obviously, we won't be spending some time um, looking at like server builds, like Ubuntu Servo, negative five, no desktop. It, it has a specific purpose. Or we're not going to be reviewing something like that. And then each good positive layout choice, we're going to go ahead and give it uh, give some extra points. So this is like um, Ubuntu Mate has multiple different layout choices you can pick from, which is all really cool and excellent things. So that's the type of thing we're talking about. What extra things in the desktops uh, would you possibly add to this list? All right, so next we are on to installers. So if your installer auto configures partitions, extra bonus because it means we don't have to fight with stuff. Um, also, same thing if it will auto configure a dual boot. Now, obviously, I don't recommend dual booting computers on the same hard drive, but we are going to give some points if you happen to have one. 
and then you're going to lose some points if your distro doesn't have an installer. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, we're, I mean, I personally, I don't know what pizza's going to do, but I personally am not going to be doing a lot of things that don't have easy installers. So that might be something I drop off of my system, but maybe I need some negatives on these installers. Um, I know Debian lately has been giving me some installing issues if I, uh, if I have not already pre-configured my, um, my partitions. So that might be maybe something to do the negative. Um, easy to use and user configurations. We're going to have some of those. All right, um, applications. So the applications, of course, there's a little bit of things in here. So uh, obviously some distros have good minimal options. So we are giving points if a distro has minimal options, a minimal option or and a you know full option. We're going to give extra points for that. And if you have the ability to choose applications, so um, what's one I looked at the other day, uh, Arch Labs, uh, Debian, uh, a lot of these things you have the ability to choose the applications on install. That is amazing and so we are going to uh, give extra points for that. Um, uh, I'm not sure, choice of software, I'll have to look at what we have, I might kick that one out. Um, a good big repository, if you've got a big repository of stuff, we like it. So, you know, Arch is generally always going to get five because he has the Arch user repository. Um, if it relies too heavily on Snap and flat packs, you're probably going to lose some. So your, uh, you know, full scale Ubuntu builds will probably lose some because like the themes are Snap packages. Why? Why would you do themes as Snap packages? Um, but regardless, uh, if you rely too heavily on Snap or flat packs, we're going to dock those because... Uh, it basically means it does. It has a very small repo. Sure, we have the ability to add things, but there are the snap in the flat pack world that's controversial enough that we don't want to push it. Uh, and, and that's the concern that I have is that people are pushing these way, way, way too hard. Kind of like it's kind of like the marketing approach. Have you noticed that businesses are trying to steamroll their ideas onto the users? Like, oh no, and, and uh, what's the way to say this? The best way to say this is to say that that. Um, People oftentimes will come up and, and resist change, and then people are like, well, no, you're just resisting change. It's the same thing WordPress is doing with Gutenberg. They asked people's opinion in the community, and the community said, no, don't do this, and they just keep on saying, well, how can we prove it? How can we prove it? How can we prove it? How can we improve it? Snaps and flat packs and app images fall under that category. There's something that, sure, there's a legitimate use for them, but... It should not be the default, and I fear we're trying to make it the default in some distros, and that's a problem. So we are docking for that. If your packages are outdated, sorry, Debian, um, but if your packages are, are old or outdated, then we're going to do that. Actually, probably sorry, my, my beloved Linux Mint, no. Um, but again, I'm still on 18.3, so we'll see what happens uh, looking in the future. All right, so for each closed source application, um, that it installs. So like Deepin comes with Chrome is the only default web browser on Deepin. You're going to get docs and points for that. So if you if you pre-install a closed source application, um, WPS would be another one. Um, it's going to get some some things on that. And then negative five for each application with a bad TOS or EULA. Uh, once again, WPS. I'm thinking of you. Um, so these are, of course, now what this means, uh, these no web apps, what this means is like uh, we had a discussion about Peppermint comes with ICE applications pointing to things like, you know, Google uh, or not Google. Eh, actually, yeah, Google Drive's in there, but uh, Microsoft um, Office 365. Um, obviously, those are technically closed sourced and have bad EULAs, but they're web applications. ICE does not install the application. It just points a browser to it in an easy to use format. We would not dock for something like that. So ICE applications are safe. Same thing with the, the EULA. As long as it's not on the operating system itself, we're going to not worry about that. Whoa. All right. So the next is stability. Uh, does everything work as expected? Plus three points if I do not have any issues with the system. It rolls out of the box. It doesn't give me any little pop-up issues. So like Linux Mint 19 on the beta and once it was released, remember I was constantly in a virtual box, constantly getting the network connecting and reconnecting and reconnecting. It would lose some points for that. It would not get the plus three. Um, if there is a feature I need to fight to get working, 
you're going to lose some points for that one. We're not going to be fighting with stuff to get things working. And then each application that crashes. Now, uh, Pizza put in there, um, not for games. I don't do games, so I'll probably leave that part out. And an application has to crash more than twice um, over the course of using it for uh, f to, to lose this application. And then easy to maintain. I must have done that one. I always spell maintain wrong. Um, if the if the uh, distro is easy to maintain, we are going to go ahead and uh, and do that. Can I? Yeah, good. I can fix it right there. All right. So that is what we're going to do under stability. And then we have other. So under other, um, if the distro is discontinued, neg ten. Um, I don't imagine I'll actually be reviewing any discontinued distros. So I don't imagine that's ever going to show up. Uh, but regardless, it is there. Plus three for every extra minor feature. So if it gives us really cool minor features, then um, that's cool. Extra major features, that's cool. We have a list of what we considered uh, major and minor features. We'll show that in a moment. Um, negative three for every minor bug or missing feature. You know, you don't give us a web browser. <laughs> Or a terminal, <laughs> you're going to lose some points. Uh, bugs that make the system unusable, neg 10 for that one. So, you know, whatever you're doing, if it's completely unusable system, so like Solace, before they fixed their ISO, uh, Solace would probably get the neg 10 because updating the system would com completely cause it to come crashing down. Um, and so um, we're going to go ahead and uh, do something like that. Of course, that has been fixed, so... I don't envision that I would do that again unless it's broken again. Um, I'll probably take out the emojis and the Asian. I just don't test those. I, mean, I don't even know how to test emojis on Linux. One of y'all kids are going to have to inform me about how to do that. Uh, if it has a bad distro EULA, like Deepin, we're thinking of you, you get neg 5 for that, and you get plus 5 if you have good documentation with distro. I know I don't like reading documentation, but hey, I'm going to give you points if you got it. <laughs> <laughs> and if the distro is easy to use. As far as our features, uh, we put down, let's see if I can get, that. Eh, looks like I can't get both of these on the screen at the same time. So minor features are going to be, do you have a choice of wallpapers, a choice of icons? Do you give me some things like a media player, an image viewer, a calendar, anything like that that's nice and handy? Those would be excellent things that we would love to see. And so any of those, then um, those are what we consider minor features. Uh, so if it's missing or if it's lacking. Uh, major features, we are calling major features. Uh, if it doesn't have a software center, so like that was one of the biggest concerns I had on my Arch Labs. And yeah, I, ha I had I had uh, at least one very arrogant guy in the comments. <laughs> yeah, go whine somewhere else. I'll delete your comments. Um, that was one of the concerns though about Arch Labs is it doesn't have a software center. Um, I actually put uh, um, Pamek on it, um, but uh, regardless. I I don't always want to do stuff through the terminal, you know, and that's the thing. Do I know how? Yeah, sometimes it's convenient. Sometimes I'm searching for stuff and it's more convenient to search in a software center. It's more convenient to install what I know I need in the terminal. So that's kind of why I want a software center. A uh, web browser, obviously, give us that. Uh, we put Office Suite with a question mark. Um, I don't know. I will probably leave that off because some people consider an Office Suite bloated and some people have specific needs for their Office Suite and so would prefer it's not installed so I'll probably ignore the presence or absence of an office suite uh, just because you know I prefer LibreOffice distro comes with LibreOffice I'm perfectly at home but there are several of you out in the, my listening community that do not prefer LibreOffice you prefer something else that's cool so I'm not gonna examine that personally for me um, and then does it have an archive manager and a term terminal emulator? So those are kind of what we're considering major and minor features. So let us know what you think of this rubric. Is there anything that you would add to it? Anything you would take off of this? And I want to use this uh, going forward to look at how we can bring more objectivity to looking at distro reviews. So thanks for coming along on this brief little video, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.